So in today's video, we'll be talking about mapping and functions, mapping or functions, and we'll primarily be discussing about the various forms of mappings or functions, namely into mapping, onto mapping, bijective mapping, uh, one or one-to-one -one mapping, and many-to-one mapping. So before we start with mapping, let's start with what is mapping. Let A and B be two non-empty sets. Now, let me just, uh, yeah. Let A and B be two non-empty sets. If there exists a rule or correspondence F, which associates to each element X of A, let's say we have an element X here, to each of these X, to each of these elements, let's call all these elements X, a unique element Y to B, Y of B, then F is called the mapping or function of A to B. So let me repeat that again. Let A and B be two non-empty sets. If there exists a rule or correspondence F which associates to each element X of A, a unique element Y of B, then F is called the mapping or function of A to B. This mapping is expressed in this form F maps X to Y or F maps A to B. Now, as I have mentioned in the definition, each of these elements in the set A needs to be correspondent or needs to be mapped to one particular single unique element in D. So, let's say I have an element X and I can map it to some Y1 and some Y2. That will not be called a mapping. So for every mapping, for every element X in this set A, there needs to be a unique element Y in B, which is being mapped by this mapping F. So this mapping Y, X to Y2 does not occur in mapping. So that is an important concept in mapping. Now we have certain definitions. So uh, let's see, X is called the pre-image or argument or independent variable. Y is called the image or F image or the dependent variable. So we map the pre-image or argument to the F image. So we have pre-image to image. The map moves from pre-image to image. Next, the set A, which has the set, the set A, which is essentially the set of all pre-images, is called the domain. And the set to which the mapping moves, so we have, the, we have the function which moves from set A to set B, then B is called the codomain. However, there is a separate set which is the set of all images, that is called the range. So you see, codomain is the totality of this set, but the set of the images that correspond to these elements is called the range. So range is essentially, let me just write, let me say range R is the short form for range. So range is a subset of codomain set. Yeah, so that is how we get the definitions. Now let's move on to the kinds of mapping. So the first mapping that we'll come across is injection mapping or injective or one on one, one mapping. So a mapping or a function F maps A to B so let's say we have this non-zero set A and a non-zero set B. So if we have a mapping F, mapping A to B, it is said to be one or one one mapping or injective mapping or injection. Different elements of A have different images in B. So let's say we consider two separate elements, two separate, yeah, two separate elements in the domain set A. But if we map them to the set B, we'll have two separate images in B. So let's uh, take an example. So let's say set A is the set of all mothers and set B is the set of all children and the mapping is the, what should I say? The mapping is basically the relationship between a mother and a child. Now, if I take two different mothers, they'll definitely have two different children. They, two mothers cannot have the same children. So when I consider two separate elements in group uh, set A, I'll, ha I'll be mapping them to two separate elements in group B or not group B essentially, two separate elements in set B. So essentially I cannot have a situation where two elements are 
mapped to the same individual. So that cannot happen. One child cannot have two mothers. One child can only have one mother. So we can have only these sort of relations. So we can only have one element mapping to one element. That is why it's called a one-one mapping. So the mathematical way of expressing this is if we consider fx equal to fy, then x has to be equal to y. Now, as I mentioned before, fx is considering this set. So I'm considering here children. So if I consider the same child, if fx equal to fy, if I'm considering, let's say, uh, let's say a child has uh, a son, we know everybody has a first name and the last name. So let's say I refer to one child, Sam, and then I say, uh, Sam, uh, let's say Sam has a nickname, Sammy. So I'm referring to Sam and I'm referring to Sammy. So Sam and Sammy are essentially the same person. If I'm referring to them, both of them at the same time, then I'm refer then their parents, their mother is essentially the same. So that's how it's easy to remember what is a one-on-one -on -one mapping. So we can remember this relationship between a mother and a child or a mother and a son, and that will always be a one-on-one -on -one mapping. So if I consider the same child, then automatically their mother is the same. If I consider two separate mothers, then they'll have two separate children. So this is an example. This is a very graphical explanation of an injection mapping or an injective mapping. So next, uh, we'll be considering many one mapping. Many one mapping is essentially the opposite of one one mapping. So here what happens is we can have a situation where two separate elements in the domain set A, the non-zero domain set A and the range set, non-zero range set of course B, we can have two elements in the domain set A being mapped to the single element in B. So here, the example of mother and children won't work. Let's say we have a situation where we consider the set of parents and the set of children. So here, every child has two biological parents, a mother and a father. So that's how we can map. We can consider the mother and the father, and we can map both of them as parents to their children. So essentially, this is the opposite of one one mapping. So if x equal to fy, if I'm considering the same child, that does not necessarily mean I'm talking about the same parent. I may be talking about the mother or about the father. So having the same child or considering or taking into account the same child does not necessarily mean that I'm talking about the same parent. Similarly, if I'm talking about two different parents, that does not necessarily mean that I'm talking about two different children. I may be talking about two different parents. I may be talking about father or I may be talking about mother, but they may both end up with the same, not end up, they may both be talking about or corresponding to the same child. So parents to children is a many one mapping, but mother to children is a one one mapping. So many one mapping and one one mapping are essentially the two sides of a coin. They are opposite in nature. The next mapping that we'll be coming into is into mapping. So let's say we have a uh, situation. Uh, let's again consider two sets, a non-empty uh, domain set A and a non-empty range set B. So an into mapping F maps A to B is called an into mapping if there exists at least one element in B which has no pre-image in A. The easiest way to remember is when you consider into mapping, remember this term in. So what we essentially mean is there's something inside a box. But when you put a, let's say you put a ball inside a box. But when you put the ball inside the box, that ball does not necessarily occupy the entirety of the box. There may remain unused places in the box. That ball fills up only a portion of the box. That is essentially the same concept here. Let's say I have four elements in my uh, domain set and I'm mapping each of them to some element to not some going by the mapping I am matching them to some element in B some image in B I may have a situation where I have some images or some elements which do not have a pre image in A so essentially these in these elements do not have some other pre image that they can be mapped back to so uh, consider a situation as follows. Let's say this is a group of children and this is the group of parents. Every children can have parents. Every children has a parent, but there may be children who don't have parents. 
so we can have orphans we can have situations where these children do not have parents in this situation this is an into mapping this is kind of a very uh, dark example but this is the one this is one of the examples which are easier to remember so in map into mapping is essentially a situation where as i have mentioned before this set this set of images that have a pre image in the domain set this is called the range set as i had mentioned in the previous part or the previous half of the video this is the range set and the entire b is the codomain set so an easy way to express this is this range set fx is a subset of the codomain set so that is what we mean by into map moving on to onto mapping onto mapping is again the reverse form of into mapping so what we essentially have is as before we had some map some elements in b which were orphaned so these elements in b did not have a pre image in the domain set but in the onto mapping every element in a will have an will have an element mapped to b so if i map all the elements from a to b i will not have any other element left in b which has not been mapped so as you can see this is a very the diagram is not very pretty but as you can see there is no element in b which does not have a pre image in a so all the elements in b have a pre image in a and all the in all the pre images in a when they are mapped to some or the other element of b they uh well, how should i say it? there are no other elements left in b to be mapped to so this b itself is the codomain set because it is the total set of elements this is again the range set because this consists of all the elements which have a pre image in a so here as i have mentioned before the range set and the codomain set is same so the feature of onto mapping is that range set is equal to codomain set the next and the final type of mapping broad type of mapping is bijective mapping so a bijective mapping is essentially like a summary of one one mapping and onto mapping so any mapping which is one one and onto is called a bijective mapping so as i as you remember one one mapping is the mapping from mother to children so what we essentially mean is for every element in uh, m or for every element in c or yeah let me call this let me call this range set or let me call this codomain set c and let me call this domain set m so every element in c has a unique element in m there cannot be a situation where two elements in m are being mapped to the same uh, c or in fact it can't be that m can be mapped to No, two elements in c because that itself is uh, against the definition of mapping so we can for every unique element in m we can only have a unique element in c so that is the condition for one one mapping next for onto mapping we know for every element in m being mapped to c if i complete all the mappings then there will not exist a single set Uh, there will not exist an element in c which has not been mapped to any other pre image so codomain set and the range set is essentially the same when i combine these two conditions i bring something called, called the bijective mapping into account so a set which is one or, or a mapping or a function which is at the same time simultaneously one one and onto is called bijective mapping so a bijective mapping is one one mapping a bijective mapping is onto mapping when both of these situations are satisfied at the same time then we call that situation to be bijective mapping 